Have you ever heard the phrase, be careful what you wish for? It means wishes can come true, but you might get more than you bargained for. Last year, I wished for a board of directors who would really challenge me. And this year, I have a board of directors who challenge me. <laughs> be careful what you wish for. Truth is, we all have a power, much stronger and more reliable than a wish. It's a power that anyone can use at any age. But a lot of us don't know we have it. I didn't know when I was younger. Let's go back, way back, to 1993. I am 13 years old, and I feel like my world is upside down, because my parents are in the middle of a really messy divorce. For normalcy, I continue to play soccer. I'm the goalie of my soccer team. And there's this one game where I dive to save the ball, but I push off my foot the wrong way, and I'm in so much pain I can barely walk. I have to sit the game out, and now I'm on the sidelines feeling like a failure, and then the tears start, and I'm crying because I just let my team down. The next day, I'm at school, and I'm limping down the hall, and I see two girls from my soccer team walking towards me. But they're the cool girls, they always ignore me, so I don't think anything of it. But this particular day, they wave at me, and I'm all, oh, they notice me. Maybe they want to be friends. So I wave back, I'm like, hey, Beth, hey, Kim. And Kim says, hey, how's your ankle? I'm like, it's really sore. You know, I heard it at the game yesterday, I sprained it. Beth says, oh, no, you're going to go cry about it again? <laughs> and then they just walk away. <laughs> I felt like such a loser. They didn't want to be friends. They just wanted to make fun of me. I was so hurt, you know, my parents are divorcing, I had physical pain, the kids are making fun of me. What I wished for was that the world was kinder and more caring, but I knew that wasn't possible, and what I really wanted was to escape the pain of this mean, cruel, hurtful world. And so I turned to drinking and drugs to try to numb myself from it. Eventually, I got kicked out of my home, I was put into foster care, I dropped out of high school. Fast forward 10 years later, it's 2003, I'm 23 years old, and I'm homeless. But I recently upgraded. I went from sleeping on park benches to finding a tent that I pitched on Makalavena Beach. So now I'm homeless in style. I mean, for the most part, because every now and then, I'd get back to my tent, and when it got real windy, it would just be gone, because it'd blow away. I didn't have any pegs for it. There's, there's this one day where I'm in my tent, and I'm trying to stay warm. It's pouring tropical rain outside. And I hear somebody just outside my tent calling my name. Vanessa, Vanessa, you in there, sis? And I'm like, who's that? Nobody knows me around here. I unzip my tent, look outside. Nathan, it's my brother's buddy from back in the day. I'm like, dude, get in here. He's soaking wet from the rain. And so he gets in, I throw him a towel, he dries off, and he sits down. And he asks me how I'm doing. I'm like, I'm good, you know? I, I got a tent, and uh, I got an ocean view, and life is good. Then he says... Yeah, you sure about that? I'm like, yeah, man, that's good, it's good, it's all good, I'm good. <laughs> and then we chat and we catch up, and after a while, he looks at me so intensely, deep into my soul, and he says to me, what do you want? What do you really want? I'm, I'm like, what are you talking about? And he continues and he says, you have so much potential. You can do, be, have anything you want. So what do you want? I'm like, Nathan, I pushed him. I'm like, why are you getting so serious? I'm like, I just want to have fun. And then he laughs, and then he gets up to go. But before he leaves, he puts his arms out, and he says, bring it in here, sis. And then he gives me this great big bear hug. And I can feel his compassion. I know that he really cares. And then he leaves. And I lay back down in my tent and cuddle up in my sleeping bag. And I look around and I ask myself, what do I want? I get honest with myself. You know, what I really want is a safe place that I can call home. I want a home of my own, a home that's not just going to blow away tomorrow. And then I remembered Nathan's words. And I can do this. I know I can do this. I started to believe in myself. And that was the first time I understood that power, that power that's stronger and more reliable than a wish. 
It's the power of intention. Get clear with what you want. Know that you can do it and take action to make it happen. The next day, I'm hitchhiking into town and I get picked up by this older couple. They're friendly and they ask me what I'm doing in Hawaii. I say, you know, I'm living in my tent in Makalavana Beach, but it's temporary. I let them know that my intention is to be a homeowner, to have a home of my own. And they're polite and they end up inviting me back to their house for dinner that night. I'm thinking, home cooked meal? Yes, please. <laughs> so I go to their house and enjoy a delicious meal. And before I leave, they say, hey, we have a spare room. You're welcome to spend the night. I'm all hot shower, <laughs> I'm in. I end up staying with them for three months, during which time they, they help me to have a safe space. And I get some odd work jobs. I'm picking noni fruit and picking navadania nuts and mowing lawns. I save up and I buy a plane ticket back to Canada. In Canada, I look up my mama and I ask my mom if I can stay with her. She's very apprehensive, <laughs> but I say, Mama, you know, I'm not going to act a fool, no more drugs, and it's temporary because my intention is to be a homeowner. My intention is to have a home of my own. Reluctantly, Mama agrees, and she lets me move in, and I find some work. I've, now I'm an order picker at a warehouse. So I'm a customer service rep at a phone company. I'm working. I'm saving. 2006, I'm 26 years old, and I move out of my mom's, <laughs> and I find myself back in my sleeping bag, only this time... I'm in the middle of my bedroom floor, cuddled up in my sleeping bag, and I feel so incredibly proud because I just bought my very own two-bedroom home in Surrey, BC, Canada. I'm a homeowner. And I remember Nathan. He was right. I can do anything I want. I just need clarity. So what do I want now? What I want is wealth. I want financial abundance. I got clear, and I know I can do this. I took action to make it happen. I left my odd jobs, and I pursued a career in financial security planning. Started off entry level as a financial advisor, and I learned, and I gained experience, and I gained wealth. And by 2012, I asked myself, now what do I want? I got clear, I actually, what I really want is financial freedom. I want to be my own boss, and I know I can do this took action to make it happen. I started my own financial agency called Mindful Abundance, where we help people get clear on what they want and through financial planning, gain confidence to make it happen. By 2015, I was like, okay, cool. I'm having fun with this power of intention stuff. What do I want now? And when I got honest with myself, I realized I want more than material things. What I really want are deep, meaningful conversations. I want authentic friendships. I want to surround myself with good people. And I know this is possible. I know I can make this happen. So I took action by starting a sharing circle called Conscious Connections, a safe space for people to come together and have deep, meaningful conversations. And it turned out I wasn't the only one that wanted this. Many people in the community were craving this. They were clear, they knew it was possible, and they took action to make it happen. They started their own Conscious Connections groups. Within a year, we had multiple groups across five different cities. And I thought, not only does the power of intention work for me, it works for groups of people, too. And it's more powerful when there's a shared intention. The next year, I decided, I want to bring groups of people together with a shared intention to make this world a better place. A place where people are kind, where we care about each other, where we help one another with compassion, empathy, respect, and understanding. That's what I really want. And I know we can do this. I know it's possible. And I took action to make it happen. I self-educated myself in public policy, social justice, talked to nonprofit leaders, put together a board of directors, and the Low Entropy Foundation was born. Today, we're a registered charity with dozens of different programs and initiatives, including Conscious Connections, which now helps thousands of people across the world. We also have YAY, a program for youth, helping them to find confidence and compassion Care, a program that puts food on the tables for families in need and offers them friendship and connection while addressing the root cause of food insecurity, and many, many more. This was all possible because of the power of intention. Get clear on what you want, know that you can do it, and take action to make it happen. Thing is, a lot of us don't know what we want. Or we want something, but we don't believe it's possible. 
So we give up and we settle. Remember when I was 13 and I was hurting because my parents were divorcing, I had a soccer injury, kids were making fun of me? I wished that the world was kinder and caring, but I didn't believe it was possible. So I gave up. I settled for a mean, cruel world that I tried to escape with drinking and drugs. But now that I know the power of intention, I can see that we're not victims of the world. Life doesn't just happen to us. Life happens with us. We get to choose anything we want. Remember how I wished for a board of directors who would challenge me? I said, be careful what you wish for. Well, truth is, now I have a board who challenged me in a positive way because we share an intention, an intention to lead by example as we help to create a kind, caring, more compassionate world. We brainstorm, we work together. How to make that a reality? Do we need additional support, more mentors, extra education? Then we hold each other accountable as we make that happen. This whole process is teaching me the magnitude of this powerful driving force called intention. It has the ability to change the world. And it's available to everyone at any age, including you. So I ask you this. What do you want? What do you really want? What is your intention?